Major felony jury trial win here at the Mark Lopez Law Firm. Hey everybody, it's attorney Matt Crows. With me, I've got attorney Zach Ritchie, and we're coming to talk about a huge victory in a jury trial win very recently here at the Mark Lopez Law Firm. So we had a client who was on the internet trying to find an attorney for his domestic violence charges. He wanted somebody who wasn't afraid to go to a trial, who had really good reviews on Google, and somebody who's going to fight for him. Because in the grand scheme of things, he didn't do anything. He had charges brought against him. So a little bit of the backstory here is this particular client came to our law firm. And when we took that initial phone call, he says, guys, I did not do any of this. The alleged victim said that I beat her up, but she never calls the police. She was never at my house. She was never at my house the day after she said this all happened. In fact, it was three days after the fact that she shows up at somebody else's house and that person calls the police. I have no idea what happened to her. Yeah, I knew her. Yeah, I used to be in a relationship with her, but I didn't do this. Why am I being charged? This is a felony. This is going to affect me forever. It's going to affect my ability to own a firearm. I'm looking at some significant prison time if I lose. Please, please help me. Of course, not afraid to back down from a fight. Myself, Attorney Richie, took on the county, go to a jury trial, and come out not guilty across the board. Huge, huge win here at the Mark Lopez Law Firm. But Zach, what was the prosecutor's stance this entire time on the charges? Did he think they were great? Unlosable? Give me a breakdown, man. Well, the prosecutor never really wanted to work with us. Um, they wanted our client to be a felon and to go to prison. Now, this should have been a level five felony because there had been some prior charges in the past, but the prosecutor didn't figure this out until, quite honestly, three days before trial. So that's absolutely insane. So what Zach is saying is ultimately this should have been charged originally as a felony five, where our client potentially could have been looking up to six years in the Department of Corrections for something he never did. Was a plea offered before trial? And if so, what was that plea looking like? There, there was a plea offered, um, but they wanted my client to remain a felon and they wanted him to go to prison for a significant amount of time. Now, my client is a single dad and he takes care of his sons who he cares deeply about and prison and being a felon was never an option for him. It would have ruined his life. So the facts come out as we're going through this entire case. We're talking, we're doing these depositions of the alleged victim. We're doing the depositions of our client's son who was at a Monster Jam event the night that this whole event actually alleged to have happened. So we have two conflicting narratives here. We have an alleged victim who says that they were with our client the entire weekend, Saturday, Sunday, until Monday before this person could get out of the house and this person could get to safety. Where our client, our version of events, and what, what the jury ultimately came down to was he was at Monster Jam with his son. And they had a great time. The kid loved the pretzels and cheese, apparently. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, the jury decided, after hearing all the evidence, that our client's story made more sense or there was just too much reasonable doubt. What happened in this three-day period if, in fact, the alleged victim wasn't there? How did these injuries occur? Because there was never a doubt or there was never any dispute about the injuries. Is that right? That's correct. I mean, that woman was hurt in some sort of fashion, just not by our client. Now, Zach, walk us through a little bit of the investigation standpoint. What's going on here? To be quite frank, not much. Um, as Matt previously said, it took her three days before she went to another person's house, and that person is the one that called the police. Um, after that, the police officers take pictures of her injuries, but that's about it. They never do cell phone tower records. They never search my client's house to find any sort of weapon that could have been used. Um, they basically had nothing to go off of except her testimony and some pictures that were taken three days after the fact. Wait, 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 wait. Zach, certainly this, this officer would have called the detective to investigate this, right? Well, you would think so, but not in this case. Well, Zach, certainly he at least got a warrant to search our client's house to find any evidence as to whether the alleged victim was there. He did not. Wait a minute. So he didn't get a warrant to search the house, and he didn't 
do anything outside of the initial phone call and showing up. Is that right? That's correct. Did he take the statement of our client? Nope. And why didn't he take the statement of our client? Because we tell our clients always plead the fifth. So that's absolutely correct. So this officer, and, and to be fair, this officer's job isn't to investigate crimes. He's, he's just a beat police officer. He's actually a sheriff. His job isn't to investigate crimes. He gets a phone call three days later, three days after the fact. And what he does, he shows up, he takes the statement of the person that called the police, not the alleged victim, and then he takes the statement of the alleged victim of the case. And at that point, it pretty much stops. At that point, the officer essentially is trying to now build this case upon the already foregone conclusion that our client was guilty. Not once did he try to get a warrant. Not once did he try to search our client's house. He did try to get the statement of our client, but by the advice of his wonderful attorneys, he decided to plead the fifth. So he didn't have to give any statements. So at this point, they're just trying to build off of one narrative three days after the fact. It was absolutely wild. And to be quite frank, Zach, I thought the jury saw right through that. What about you, man? I thought so too. There were some people on the jury that um, were really emotional during the alleged victim's testimony because at the end of the day, she was her. Um, but after hearing the testimony of our witnesses as well, I, I think they came to the conclusion that her story just didn't make sense. And, 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 and Zach, you're 100% right, man. So this jury comes back. After a jury trial, there's always a time to try for the attorneys to talk to the actual jury. It's always going to be up to the jury, so there's never an obligation for the jurors to stay and talk to the attorneys. In this particular instance, however, the jury discussed the case with the judge after the trial. Then they all decided they wanted to leave, and that's totally fine. The jury did us a huge favor. They wanted to do this all in one day, originally scheduled for two. So I commend the jury for deciding to stay and stick it out for the entire day and try and hear it all in one day, which we, we accomplished. But they did let the judge know, you know, kind of some constructive criticisms for both sides. And there was some for both sides. There's no such thing as a perfect trial either way. I mean, a lot of it has to be done on the fly if stories kind of contradict one another. Because in this particular case, Zach, there was even a late add-on witness, wasn't there? The last minute, yep. And, and how, did, how did you go about arguing that to the judge? Well, we explained to the judge that this was a witness that name has never been disclosed to us. Now, she was mentioned in the original police report, but up until three days before trial, we didn't know her name at all. Um, state still wanted to add her as a witness. We objected, and basically she was only allowed to say, what, one or two things? Yeah, I was, basically the judge limited this, this witness to, two, to answer about two questions. So it, there was a lot of open-endedness as to what could, this witness could have provided versus what she was legally allowed to provide based on the judge's ruling. And after everything was said and done, the jury deliberated for a little bit over an hour, came back not guilty across the board. So the judge comes out, gives some constructive criticism, Obviously, you know, the jury comes back, tells the judge, hey, there's just too much reasonable doubt. What happened in those three days? What happened if she was at this house? How come there's no evidence from the house brought to us? So a lot of it is based on the botched investigation. And another part is just on the fact that there's too much unknown. And I commend that jury for coming back. Three counts across the board. Felony domestic violence. Felony battery with some moderate bodily injury and a misdemeanor criminal mischief coming back not guilty across the board. Zach, how happy was the client? He hugged us. He was that happy. Um, it, we changed his life. He didn't know in that moment in time if he was going to lose his house, lose his children, go to prison. I, I really think that I've never seen someone so emotional. That's the part of our job that we love the best. Every attorney here, myself, Zach, obviously did this trial. We love going to trial. It is literally the best part of our job, but we couldn't do it without the unrelenting support of our client, giving his 100% faith and trust in our firm and constant belief that we could do this for him. But most importantly, our gratitude is to the client for allowing us that opportunity and for pleading the fifth and not making a bad situation way worse. If you ever find yourself looking for an attorney, you know somebody who needs an attorney to fight a criminal charge and not somebody who's just going to roll over and accept the plea that the government offers, give us a call. 
317-632-3642. And remember, always plead the fifth. And Attorney Richie, good job, man.